In today's episode of Coffee with Jody, I'm going to talk about navigating through the stages of grief as we go through this pandemic and its impact on our businesses and on our world. Hi, Jody here. Many of you are probably quite familiar with the stages of grief from Elizabeth Kubler Ross denial, bargaining, anger, depression, and acceptance. And I've been thinking about, uh, as I've talked with business owner after business owner after business owner, you know, and in my own personal life with my friends and my family, you know, how people are going through this pandemic. And there's lots of evidence of going through these stages of grief. So I wanna walk through them you know, with you today. When this first happened and we began getting news of it back in March, you know, there was a good bit of denial. And you know, many of us were kind of minimizing you know, what was going on, wear masks, don't wear masks. There was a lot of um, confusion, some misinformation, uh, just a lack of information. And there's still evidence out in the, in the news of people being in denial about what's going on. And then as business owners, you know, denial about, you know, what impact it might have on our businesses. Well, it's a virus and, you know, it'll come and go and, you know, and nobody really knew what it was going to mean to the businesses and certainly, you know, through the shutdowns and so on. And so there was a lot of denial and there's still, you know, a certain level of denial. You know, I had some people, you know, tell me like just felt like, you know, crawl, crawling up in a ball and pulling the cover over their head or climbing under the bed. You know, others who came out in that next stage of grief, you know, fists and fury full of anger and, you know, this can't be happening and why is this happening? And, you know, the, the interesting thing about this stage of anger is that it gives people energy and so it feels like that anger is is doing something you know anger isn't very effective against a virus um, but it, it does give people the energy um, to to stay in action you know the only issue with that is that the energy that goes into anything is the energy that comes out of it on the other side. You know, these are like laws of physics, actually. And that, law, that energy uh, of anger doesn't usually produce, you know, a very good outcome. You know, but, you know, people do, um, you know, come at this and we've seen a lot of anger. We've seen a lot of anger erupting in our in our streets, in our, in our, in the, in the news, you know, even today it was like, you know, somebody was angry because, um, you know, they had to wear a mask in, in a store, you know, and then they like hit somebody, you know, it's uh, a lot of anger and a lot of that anger is a mask for the fear that's underneath it. Um, feeling out of control, feeling like, um, they don't have a say. You know, so anger is a very important stage and you see, um, and I've seen lots of people that are, are in that. And the interesting thing about stages of grief is that kind of moving through, it doesn't mean that, you know, you go like denial, anger, bargain, depression, acceptance. There's these spaces that, you know, people move through and they're very fluid spaces. Um, you know, and then as we move on from that, we move into bargaining. And I think that this is an important stage uh, for us to talk about because some of the bargaining was actually really good bargaining. Once we uh, you know, were able to reach out and it's like, well, hey, you know, can I work with you on this? Or um, if I stop doing this, you know, would you be willing to do that? Um, people being able to kind of come together and look for ways to collaborate. You know, so as it relates to you know, what we're going through in this pandemic, it's not necessarily the bargaining with God that you would think of in the stages of grief as it relates to dying, but it could be. <laughs> but um, but it's a you know kind of a bargaining, and then people you know began to look for trying to bargain. I know that I was talking with somebody yesterday about you know bargaining with their landlord. I mean, we certainly called our landlord at the beginning of this to just kind of see like. You know, hey, you know, are you willing to do anything? You know, what, 
And I was like, yeah, well, you know, I'll give you four or five extra days, but beyond that, no. Other people, you know, reached out to their landlords and they were great with them and they worked with them and they put it at the other end and, or they let them uh, spread out, you know, a couple of months over the next couple of months. And so bargaining was a very important part, I believe, of us being able to navigate through um, these kind of stages of, of grief where we're looking to create something, right? Um, from there, you know, people began moving, some people, um, you know, depending on whatever industry they were in, they had very well moved into stages of depression and, you know, feeling hopeless and feeling lost and feeling, um, you know, that they, that they are, you know, are ruined. Uh, you know, the, the, if you look at, you know, down here in Miami, the hospitality industry, you know, very severely hit. Um, the cruise industry and all the other ancillary businesses that support these two, you know, very severely hit. Their employees very severely hit. Um, I read something in Florida Trend the other day, you know, $23 billion loss of economic activity in South Florida, you know, uh, in just the last couple of months. You know, not only from the cruise industry themselves, but all of the business that goes along with that, you know, the you know, you come down on a cruise, you stay in a hotel, you go to dinner, and you get the idea. You know, so there's uh, there is a good bit of depression, and I think that at this at this point, when we recognize, you know, that that's happening, you know, to us or to you know, our coworkers or to our employees or to our family members, you know, to be able to say, hey, you know, what can you do to take care of yourself right now? And sometimes it can be something very small, like a bath and a cup of tea or a glass of wine. Or it may be, you know, like we did this weekend. It's like, uh, I got to go rent a boat and go out on the, on the bay and, and just get out of the house because, you know, too much being in the house or, um, you know, feeling you know, so locked up. That cabin fever, you know, it's, it's very real. <laughs> okay? And so, you know, lots of people have different ways of dealing with depression whether that's um, you know, running or working out or meditation or yoga or reading. Um, I've been on a culinary adventure myself, but um, you know, like what are those different ways that people can you know, begin to deal with kind of that sadness or that depression you know, that inevitably sets in, you know, particularly at this stage of, uh, of our world dealing with the pandemic where Life hasn't really gone back to normal the way we had hoped or were promised that it would. You know, and then the next stage is that of acceptance. And I, I find a, a lot of business owners right now are saying, okay, the, if this is the way that it is, um, many of them have looked at whether they could pivot or not. Some of them have actually done really well during this. Others have, you know, have had zero income from the beginning of, of, of this pandemic uh, in March, and, and that there's a certain acceptance. The beauty of accepting, like being aware and then accepting, is that when the actions that come from a space of acceptance, those are actions that have the energy of creation in them. And so when we're accepting what's so, we're dealing with what's so, then we can begin to create from there. And so this is a really important stage of, of the grieving process. And again, it might be, yeah, I'm accepting it today and two days from now I'm angry again or I'm frustrated or I'm afraid or I'm, you know, I'm in denial about it. Um, you know, and so there's, the, again, this fluidity. Um, you know, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross is one model of, of grieving. You know, there are other models and one of them actually has seven stages of grief. You know, kind of that shock and denial, um, pain and guilt, um, you know, the uh, guilt about their, their uh, fears impacting others, um, being angry and bargaining then the depression that inevitably follows when things are not you know, turning out the way we thought they would or could or should. And then kind of this upward turn where um, some of that anger 
um, and that you know and that shock has kind of died off and we're looking at all right next you know now what and um, and then you know reconstructing and rebuilding and working through you know, the, the the pain and the anger um, journaling great tool you know for that um, conversations with a friend or long walks um, again you know, whatever it is that you do or you can do or you can introduce into um, your day in and day out to you know, mitigate that depression and begin to reconstruct and work through. So part of the working through you know, that we've done and that we've done with our clients has been what are the, uh, what are the things that we know we wanna get done in our business? How can we improve things here in the business? You've heard me talk about um, we've become raving fans of Paul Akers and his books on Two Second Lean and Banishing Sloppiness, you know, and just really embracing that, um, getting ready for not only what we can do with our clients today, but in 2021 and what we'll be doing, what we were committed to be doing as we go forward with that, and then acceptance and hope. And, um, you know, we're, you often hear hope is not a strategy. Um, I do think that hope is a really important energy and quality that things will get better, that they can get better, and that we can take the actions necessary to make them better. So with all of that, you know, kind of coming back to, I think it's really, really important that we understand that this was a shock you know, that there is a, the experience of, of denial and anger and, and you know, grief and this kind of depression or sadness and, and that as leaders, it's our job to manage our energy and the energy of our team and in our environment. And so we're called to kind of a higher level of, of responsibility in managing these emotions. And I think it's just really important that we recognize that they're there and, and take proactive measures to address them so that we all come through this on the other side, you know, better, healthier, happier, stronger businesses and human beings. If you got value from this video, please like it, share it, subscribe. And thank you for being here with me today. Um, I wish you the very, very best and in your own navigation through this and I look forward to being with you in the next episode. Bye for now.